Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Ancient Legends Challenge. In the last episode, we discovered a fierce new little friend for our brood of winter babies. Now we have our very first friendly Baryena in our midst. And poor John Panda is going to have his paws absolutely full as soon as we skip the day. He already has three kids to watch after now, little Pebble Hollow, little Lacey, and our newest Baryena friend. But his mate is also just about to give birth to her very final baby. So we need to make sure we can bring her down to the nests. And I think she should be able to make it there. She can even meet the Baryena on her very last day on the island too. So she knows that her babies are going to be quite well protected by the guardian Baryena. But more than that, I think Lacey has taken quite a shining to him. Let's have her scoot up here, so she can maybe pick up some more of the grass. We don't want to lose this guy, and I think she in particular is going to be following in his shadow every step of the way. Oh, Pebble Hollow, have you found a little bunny over here? Ah, oh, very, very interesting. Maybe he's going to be searching for bunnies? Our little bunny guide, just like Azon does? And did I actually see a crabbit inside our hot springs? Oh my goodness! He's taking a bath inside our warm hot springs. Oh, the ocean must be too cold for him right now. Well, that means that somebody could come down there looking for crabbit stew. If you guys are particularly hungry, we do have some extra sources of food waiting in the darkness. So, unfortunately, Silera has found herself in a similar situation to the Kravitz. All of her years in stasis, when she was inside the glacier, has unfortunately left her quite weak to the cold. So she's not quite as hardy as her friend Snowdrop or tiny little Mila. Now she was searching for the bunnies too, but I think Snowdrop is going to call her back because we need to bring Silera to warmth again. Though with all of these bunnies hopping around, I think she would find it very, very hard not to swipe them up. So as we bring Mila to her side just to warm her up again, we'll have Snowdrop go ahead and pick up all of that meat that she collected, along with those tasty roots too. Those are just important for our food supplies. So I guess what we could do is bring this trio through the tall grass over here. Azon is keeping watch anyways, so maybe the bunnies will even lead him in the right direction. That is exactly what he's chasing after right now, so we'll see if the two can cross paths. Gabby and Ivan, meanwhile, are trying their best to lead little Boo through the tall grass. Unfortunately, she is very, very slow, thanks to her frog toes, so they figure she would be a bit more comfortable if she had some tide pools to hop around. Gabby is also super into collecting shells, what with her cracker jaw. So we'll see if she can find any more as she scoots along the shore. Oh good, it looks like there's another one in the tide pools over here. I'll bet that your little baby boo is going to try to find those shells for you too. Even though she can't pick them up herself, she can at least show you where they're located. Ah, and our crabbit friend has come by to see Knight's very final baby. So this baby is going to be blessed by the crabbits. And this guy is even coming over here to check out all of our bunny meat. Now that's a little bit more suspicious. We're going to have to keep an eye on him. But let's see what Knight's final baby is going to look like. Oh, the ticking trunk? Did the crabbit pass out in shock? In complete awe of this warrior baby with the digging trunk. He has the ram horns, he has double claws. Unfortunately, he only has the medium body, so he won't quite be hardy enough to go traveling himself. But I mean, he is quite the grand little warrior prince. An excellent baby for Knight to leave us with. So let's see. The next name on my list is Sleep. So welcome to our tribe, little one. Oh, with all those pale spots, he almost looks like a little giraffe. The markings of a giraffe, the head of an elephant, and the claws of some fearsome beast. So you're going to be quite interesting for us to follow. 
Now it looks like our friendly bear Yena may be going after the bunny meat, which is certainly no surprise. We already know that the bear Yena loves the bunnies. The bunnies were actually what led him to us, or at least his mother. So that was why I wanted to name the bear Yena something that related to rabbits. The most popular suggestion for him was Usagi, which I believe means bunny in Japanese. So I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Do feel free to let me know if I'm ever pronouncing your names wrong. I definitely wouldn't put it past myself. But I think we'll have to have Pebble Hollow scoot on over here to pick up the Krabbit at least. We don't want to leave that meat lying around. And then we'll have Lacey come down here, right next to her new friend, and pick up the bunny meat for him. So you two can share that gigantic feast. That's quite a bit of food for just two little babies, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy it nonetheless. Now John Panda, the moment has come for you to scoot on down here and take care of all of your children. Part of me is fearing for his soul right now. He is going to have quite a bit on his hands. He knew what he was getting into though, and he does actually really like spending time around the babies. So I think he'll enjoy it, trouble and all. Though we did unlock a new gene, so let's take a quick peek inside Izan's mutation menu just to see what it might be. It looks like it was probably the normal fertility, so that's always a good thing for us to keep on hand, especially if we are going to start breeding with the friendly Baryinas, which often seem to have pretty low fertility. So Izan has some meat to collect. Oh, and it looks like this crabbit over here may have also passed out from shock. Well, Mila could actually scoop this one up for us, as she guards the rest of the meat over in the tall grass, just so nobody comes by to steal it. Silera's feeling a little bit better now that she was warmed up by her tribe mates, but Snowdrop doesn't want to take any chances. So let's lead this ancient warrior through the tall grass over here. Oh, she's going to have to pass up the bunnies this time. This must be so hard for her to do. Go ahead and dive into the tall grass for us. Maybe there's even more little morsels waiting out this way. I think that's the only way that Snowdrop would be able to convince her to leave those behind. And you know, with the smell of meat in the distance, maybe she would be more willing than we think. Azan can go ahead... Oh my gosh, we have a lot of meat out here. Oh my goodness, I forgot how many you actually caught. I was hoping he could start making his way through the grass too, but it looks like it's going to take an extra turn. I think these families will get along quite well. With Silera being an ancient huntress, she has quite a bit of experience to lend to creatures like Azon. So now if we go back over here, Maybe we can get started on our family between Ivan and Gabby. We also wanted them to consider a little poison fanged brood. We know their babies will have the hammer tail for sure, since that's what both of them are wearing. But if we could pull those poison fangs out of their inactive traits, I think that would be a pretty good advantage for this family. It would be a nice way for us to potentially introduce the saber fangs in the future too. Once we finally do unlock those from the glaciers, the two fangs do have a slightly similar look to them, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're related in some form. Now we'll want to place the ram horns on Gabby, just to give her babies that extra little boost of strength that Boo is currently missing. And on that same note, I think we'll also place the normal hind legs into her second slot. I know it's very, very unlikely that we'll pull that out again, because Ivan actually has the normal hind legs in both of his. But just in case, and just so we don't run into that situation in any of our future generations, we're going to make sure that the hind legs are kept nice and swift for the mountains. We'll have to try to fix Ivan's short-sighted eyes. He does have one of those traits in his inactive slots. And then I think we'll go ahead and place the claw into his second slot just again to make his family a little bit stronger. If they do have the chance of getting those poison fangs, we'll want to make sure that their babies are absolute warriors. So go ahead and breed with Gabby, hopefully. 
Oh yeah, their fertility is a little bit low too. Or at least Ivan's is. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that for the future. Then Gabby, you can come on over here. Oh, with all the bunnies. And set up a nice nest right by this lone tree. I feel like that would be a pretty good spot for us to have some babies. I don't think there's too much worry about danger here at least. Really, little bunny? You want to get a first-hand view of our newest baby to be born? I think we're actually ready to skip the day too. So, there's no turning back now, little Kai. Our new baby is officially here. Ooh, and he doesn't have the poison fangs. But he does appear to be quite the little warrior. Oh, I love those dark ram horns on him. I think that's the first time we've seen those dark ram horns on our babies. Yeah, most of our creatures have like the pink colors or the gray. So his are super, super dark. And it stands out so well against his rosy fur. Now the next name on my list is Frostbite. A lot of you suggested this name as kind of a throwback to the Frostbite tribe. So this little guy is quite special. Welcome to our tribe, little one. I'm sure you'll be able to keep us very well protected. We do need more muscle on the side of the island if we're going to grow a new family here. So he might just be our leading force. Oh, and Boo, you found a new little shell for your mother? Well, maybe you could consider calling her over here. Oh, but Ivan is getting rather cold. Will it be enough to move him right here? Yeah, it seems like Gabby is still helping to warm him up. And then he can go ahead and pick off that bunny meat for you too. So let's have Gabby scoot on over this way. So hopefully she can pick up the shell on the next turn. As long as it doesn't get swept away by the bandit brothers. We probably should have had Boo try to pick it up first. Though I have noticed that since we're in the water, she can move with a little bit more ease. So I guess they were right to take her to this area. Now she's having a little bit of trouble cracking open that shell. So her mother will try her best to show her how to collect them as soon as she has a bit more energy to spare. Now how are you guys doing out here? We don't have any dangers, right? No dangers anywhere to be seen. Just our friendly bear Yina and what appears to be a dead crab in the water. So maybe this would be a good time for you, Lacey, to see if you can pick that up for your little friend too. It seems like he's quite interested. He is gazing out to the water anyway. So go ahead and scoop up that food and then try to make sure that he's not getting lost in the tall grass. He is still a little bit young after all. And since you have your very final gem, you should be able to keep track of him quite easily. So Little Sleet is the only one left who hasn't fully grown. But he does have his first gem now, which we can change right over to that orange color. Oh, and that reminds me too. We never actually changed Silera's colors over to blue. Since she has the hammer tail, she would be another creature who can wear those colors. So now, Azon. I'm sure you're hearing all of that commotion out in the tall grass. Oh, and don't worry one bit, Silera. Mila is still on the job. She's making sure that all of those pesky bunnies are going straight into our pockets. But as Snowdrop picks up some of these last roots, we should be able to nudge Silera deeper into the grass. That way the ancient huntress can come out here and meet Azon herself. And also get a quick look at all of these hot springs. These are really going to aid her in her journey. She should be much more comfortable if she has a nice hot spring to warm up in. Interestingly enough, that was about where we found her. I think her glacier was over here somewhere. So she must have been just too far away to warm up in them back when she was on her original journey. But now as she gets ready to take her nice warm bath, she can watch on in awe as Azon grabs that bunny that she was chasing. And now she can rest easy, knowing that the tribe is in very good hands. Maybe Pebbleheart can even come up here to investigate too. He also did have a particular interest for the bunnies, though it seems as if most of them have hopped away from here, or they've already been scooped up by Lacey and the Baryina, of course. So let's bring him up in this direction. 
Oh, it looks like they are stealing all your berries again. So that could mean that we still have more in the area. Oh, maybe this would be a good way for you to impress the ancient huntress. You can show her how you can ambush the bunnies who are looking to steal from your food sources. Yeah, I had a feeling we still had a few sneaking around in the tall grass. So John Panda, do you have any roots to dig up? It looks like they're a little bit too far away. I know you don't want to leave your baby's side, so we'll have you just expand the territory instead. And it looks like Pebble Hollow's plans may have worked. This bunny is unaware of his presence at the moment. We do still have one more turn to take with Snowdrop though, so hopefully he's not going to hop too far away. We should still be able to have Pebble Hollow jump out of the tall grass and swipe him up on the next turn. So let's zoom out now and skip the day. Oh, as the rains come, and the bluebirds too. Well, that's a little bit more worrying. We want to make sure that he's not getting near any of our babies. Right now our youngest is over here by the tree. Little Frostbite with his very first gem, sitting happily next to his father, who is starting to get a little bit cold again. So let's have Gabby grab up that shell. Oh, she's getting so close to the end of her lifespan too. Oh no, I almost forgot. Okay, so they're going to have to breed again as soon as possible. It's her love for shells. Her love for shells distracted her from having a nice big brood. But that's okay. We still have one more chance at least to pull those poison fangs. And Frostbite still has them in his inactive traits. So there's still a chance that we could see it again later. Now let's see if Boo can find any more of those shells. Something to offer up to her mother before she passes. It looks like it is awfully quiet out this way. Oh, there's a little shell. It looks like it must have gotten swept down by this waterfall. Well, we'll see if you can maybe try your hand at that one as soon as you have a little bit more energy to spare. Now, once again, let's make sure there's no major dangers out this way. Aside from the bluebird in our skies, it looks like everything else is safe. Ah, and our Baryena friend is growing up too. It looks like he might be a teenager now. So I wonder if he is more likely to roam away from our tribe. It seems like that's when they start to wander off more on their own. Oh no, Pebble. Oh, I forgot about the bunny. I was so distracted by the little baby. Okay, well it looks like he may have stolen your berries after all. But that doesn't mean that you can't come over here and gobble him up. And then hopefully bring some of that meat over to Silera. Now that she is nice and toasty warm after taking a nice long bath in the hot springs, I'm sure she would be willing to lend you a little bit of her experience. And maybe you two could even consider starting a family too. Their immunity genes do line up very, very nicely. And he even has the hammer tail and his inactive traits. So that's another good way to keep that on all of our babies. Oh, and Mila, I wanted you to join all of your other friends. But unfortunately, you just keep getting distracted by all of these bunnies. It would be nice if we could bring somebody out here, like Azon, to help you. I'm a little bit worried that he might get too cold. We don't have many hot springs out in this area, which is what Silera was suffering from. So we'll just have to keep a really close eye on him. And Snowdrop will definitely warn him as much. She's already seen one of her tribe mates fall victim to the colds. And she doesn't want to see it happen again. But I mean, she has so many tasty roots to dig up out this way. I don't think she'd be able to resist. So we'll bring her up here for a nice big feast on the next turn. Something tells me that Bluebird is looking more for our meat sources rather than the babies. We've caught so many bunnies in our time here. It seems like all of that meat lying around would be more of an interest to the birds. So we'll have to make sure that our hunters are either guarding their meat or that they pick it up right away. We do have some bunnies eyeing us from the tall grass over here. So I wonder if maybe Sleek could try to pounce on them. We could maybe have John Panda scoot toward the grass. That way he can light up more of this area. 
Yeah, now Sleek can jump right in here for some nice bunny stew. Oh my goodness, all of the bunnies are jumping in for the party. Oh, now they can share a meal together? A little father-son lunch? Bunny stew must be their absolute favorite snack. Well, you guys can pick it up on your next turn, which will be John Panda's very final day. So it's quite fitting that you had one last grand adventure. Now, Lacey, why don't you see if you can light up this path for your Baryina friend? That way we don't lose them in all of that tall grass. And then I believe we should be once again ready to skip the day. So we'll zoom out and make sure that nothing spawns. Oh, I think our Baryina might be fully grown now. Oh, that always scares me. That never fails to catch me off guard. I thought he was a new Baryina coming out for our babies. But I think he might just be interested in all of this nice bunny stew that we have waiting inside the hot springs. So... Oh, wait a second. We have a rogue male? Oh no. A rogue male got to snowdrop? Oh, he must be a new one? Well, thank goodness it looks like their immunity genes are different. So at least this baby won't be sick. Oh, but look at those awful genetics. The lean body, the short-sighted eyes, even the blindness too, and the hemophilia in his blood gene. Oh, Snowdrop, this is not good news. I wonder if she was trying to take a page from her old friend's book. Back when Melodine and Reezy wanted a child of their own, they decided to take matters into their own hands and go for the rogue males. She's getting so close to the end of her story, too. Maybe she was hoping that this could be the same. But I mean, even down to the frog toes, this male is just not worth the time. Well, you'll definitely have to get rid of him for us, so he doesn't bother any of our other females. We'll have to keep a close eye on Mila, too, I guess. Maybe it's a good thing that you're so far away from the rest of the tribe. Though, this does make a very good time for Silera to start her family. Her very healthy family, hopefully, with Pebble Hollow. We'll drop the normal eyes into her first slot to get rid of the short-sighted gene. And then, since this is a challenge to get all of the ancient genetics on one creature, we might as well start breeding the digging trunk into their line as well. It's quite fitting, since she is such an ancient creature herself. I wouldn't be surprised if she has a little bit of the digging trunk mixed in on the family tree. I guess we'll leave his second slot open for now, and we'll just see what becomes of their babies. See if we need to add anything extra into their mutation menus after she has her first one. So go ahead and drop the nest down right here for now. I know we have a permanent nest down there by the hot springs, but I guess right by the tree would be a good location for their babies. That way, they can still keep a watch on the berry bush. They've been quite distracted so far, but maybe if we can have Pebble Hollow pick off the bunny right now, we won't have to worry so much in the future. Oh my gosh! Your shell has been swept away and replaced by a bunny? Are you serious, Boo? Oh, you must be so upset. Did the bunny actually steal it from you, though? Well, I mean, I guess this is still pretty good. I know that Gabby will really appreciate having some extra little bunny meat. She is probably quite hungry, having to travel so far to get to her nest. And now she can land one good swipe on this bunny, too. Teach Frostbite how it's done. In fact, if he goes over here, he can pick that up for you. As the bunnies continue to splash around in the tide pools. We might have to have Ivan lend you a hand, but for now I think he is a bit too leery to get far away from his mate. Now let's make sure that we're keeping a close eye on that rogue male. He's not getting too close to Mila, right? Now that could be a situation. I'm not sure about their immunity genes, but she does have one of those deformed paws. So there's a chance that a baby born between them could end up with two of the deformed paws then they would be just like the rogue males. They wouldn't be able to get around very easily, and they definitely wouldn't be able to pick up any food. So I think, Mila, 
You should probably try scooting around this way. And there you are, little guy, falling right into Azon's trap. Go ahead and land a good blow on him for us. And I think that should leave him with just like one more day left on his lifespan. So we don't have too much longer to worry about him. <laughs> and in fact, we can just take him out once and for all. And a bunny too for good measure, excellent. All of the bunnies are coming out of the woodwork. Well, that's a good way to impress Mila if I ever did see one. I'm sure she'd love to come up there and feast on all of those bunnies with you. Now I guess this means we'll have to have Snowdrop find a good place for a nest. Maybe for now she can travel toward the stump. We'll have to have her place it down right here if we want to have this baby on this turn though. So no scouting for now I'm afraid. Now do you think Lacey would be interested in starting a family with our friendly Bergina? I think there is quite the good possibility. So now that he's fully grown, we'll scoot her on over here, and then she can use this permanent nest instead. I'm not sure if she was born in this nest, but it was awfully close by either way. So it's kind of like she's reusing her old childhood home. Now for her family. We can't mess with the Baryena's genetics, of course. But I actually wanted to try placing the nimble fingers into her mutation menu. It seems a little bit strange, but I have noticed that all of our cracker jaws have died out, so we don't have a way to pick up these acorns anymore. And I think having the nimble fingers on the Baryena babies would make for quite the interesting twist anyway. So we'll have the most fearsome collectors in all the land. Go ahead and breed with Usagi, and then we'll have you scoot into the permanent nest, and hopefully we'll have some nice strong collectors soon. I don't think that Sleet is going to want to leave the hot springs, not while his father is on his very last day. So we'll have him just pick up some of the extra grass in the area, and these two can sit side by side in their nice warm bath as we get ready to skip the turn. So we have four babies being born on this turn. All right then, we might as well zoom out just to make sure that nothing dangerous is coming by to attack them. It looks like everyone is safe, right? I thought I heard a growl. Oh, I did hear a growl. Oh, I thought it was just Usagi, but it looks like we do have yet another Baryena in the tall grass. So we're going to have to send our warriors out to deal with that very soon. But we have quite the interesting mix of babies to take a look at. It looks like a female has been born, and she has those giraffe markings just like Sleet. She is actually gorgeous. Oh, and she's very, very strong too. Excellent. The hammer tail, the digging trunk. A very good example of how strong an ancient legend can be. So the next name on my list is Taylor. Welcome to our tribe, little one. I'm sure you'll be very helpful getting food for us. Though, hopefully your story won't be ending with this Baryena in the grass. I'm sure your father will make sure you're safe. Now how about our Baryena baby? It looks like she does have one of those Baryena claws. Yes, and the nimble fingers too, and even the cracker jaws, so she doesn't technically need it, but it will still be quite helpful for the future of our tribe. And of course, because she has the bear Yina claw, that means she has also unlocked it in our mutation menus. So that means that our other families can use it too, to help boost the strength on their babies. As for you, the next name on my list is Kitten. So welcome to our tribe, little one. I'm sure you'll put those kitten claws to very good use. Now how did Snowdrop's baby fare? I hope he doesn't have the lean body. Oh no. Oh, that is not good. The lean body is like the worst possible thing you could have on the mountains. That is going to make it so very hard for you to get around. In fact, if you don't stay by the hot springs, you are very, very likely to freeze. It's so sad that Snowdrop's fate has been to guide these cold creatures to the hot springs, even down to her own baby, her one and only son. The next name on my list is Linus, so welcome to our tribe. 
I'm sure that Snowdrop will take very good care of you. She has experience after all, so she's going to make sure that you won't freeze out in the colds. Now, how about this baby? Oh my goodness! One last grand warrior from Gabby, it seems. What an interesting mask he's wearing. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything quite like that before. So last but not least, the next name on my list is Fisto. Welcome to our tribe, little one. I'm sure you're going to have fun charging up and down the shores with your brother Frostbite. Oh no, he's getting cold too. Okay, then it might be time for your father to come over here and warm you up. We're going to have to let all of those bunnies live for now. I wonder if Boo Boo is going to be in the same boat. She does have the big bodies, so her cold resistance is a little bit higher. But with just the stinky tail, I'm not sure if that's going to keep her safe in the coldest of weather. But we have bigger situations on our hands right now. And in the next episode, it looks like we're going to have to figure out how to defend all of these brand new babies from that new bear Yina and the grasses. This one unfortunately doesn't have a little baby for us to scoop up and take in, so we'll have to try our best to conquer them quickly. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!